the Node MCU is capable of detecting trackable Wi-Fi signals coming from nearby smartphones, allowing it to turn on an LED anytime we detect a friend or enemy nearby. We'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Smartphones are supposed to randomize your MAC address and hide the real one when scanning for nearby Wi-Fi networks. This is important because otherwise your phone is super trackable, and in the past this has been a problem because everyone from grocery stores to police would track people's MAC address. Now, new devices such as iPhones and Android devices all attempt to randomize your MAC address as much as possible. However, in practice, this is actually pretty easy to defeat. If you create a fake Wi-Fi network that's similar to one that someone has connected to before, or even turning on your phone, opening your screen, or navigating to your Wi-Fi selection menu, all will send out a burst of identifying probe frames, which is what your phone uses to identify itself as needing to connect to nearby Wi-Fi networks. Now we can use that to be able to detect either when our own phone is putting out these signals, or when a friend is nearby by detecting these probe frames coming from their smartphone. Now we can use this node MCU and program it with this uh, friend finder code, which I've also added the ability to turn on an LED in one of three colors, depending on how many friends you're tracking. Now I also needed to implement a cooldown timer, so the LEDs will turn off after 1000 packets have been received that do not match any of the MAC addresses we put on the list. Now in order to get started with this project, you'll need a node MCU, which is kind of like an Arduino, and then Arduino IDE, and a three color RGB four pin LED in order to get started. Once you have all those, we can begin. Now this project is based on the ESP8266 friend detector by Ricardo Oliveira. And you can see the ori original hackster.io page here. Now you can also see the code, which uh, in the original version outputs to serial, but in our version, we'll go ahead and add a three color LED and also add a cooldown timer in order to overcome some of the timing problems I had when trying to implement my solution. Now, I really like this because it detects the MAC address, not just in probe frames, but also in data frames and management frames. So all in all, this is a super cool project and I really enjoyed going through the code and working on it. Now, the first step will actually be going into the Arduino uh, homepage and downloading the IDE. Now, once you have this, you'll need to open it up and go into preferences and go to the section here, additional board manager URL and copy and paste this URL into it in order to make sure that we have the correct libraries. Now, as soon as this is done, you can go ahead and go into tools, boards, and then board manager. And when you're in the board manager window, you can just type in ESP8266 and you should be able to find the community uh, package which we need to install. Here you can see ESP8266 by community uh, is available. So go ahead and install this. And once you have it, you should be able to go into your tool setting and select the node MCU as the module that you are using. Now, this is all we need to do in order to start outputting uh, code to the node MCU. So we can consider that step done and go on to the GitHub page where we're going to get our code. Now here we can go to the GitHub for the fork that I created for this project. And we can go into the friend detector and see that there are three different things we'll need to download. Now you can go ahead and git clone this by clicking on clone or download and then opening a terminal window and typing git clone and then just pasting this in here. And then you'll be able to go into the folder and see these three files. Now the first is a .ino sketch, which you'll be able to open up in Arduino IDE. And then you will also notice two libraries that Ricardo actually wrote for this project, which again is super cool. Now you'll need to include these, so I'll show you how to do that uh, but first you can go ahead and either copy and paste this or just take the file and open it up in Arduino IDE. Now if you are um, going to copy and paste this, make sure you click on raw because otherwise these numbers will appear and you can just copy and paste this and be ready to start working on the code. Now this is the friend detector. So we'll go ahead and use this in order to modify it a little bit to include the MAC addresses we want to track. 
Now this looks a little bit longer than your standard MAC address, and I want to explain how to translate it because I didn't understand exactly the first time. Now the 0x is just a prefix, and when you're translating your MAC address or your friend's phone's MAC address into uh, this little list right here, the first thing you'll need to do is add a 0x in order to make sure that it's formatted correctly. So you can get your MAC address or the MAC address of your friend by going on, let's say, uh, Fing and doing a network scan in order to determine the IP address and the MAC address of your device. But often you can also just look it up by tapping on um, settings or going through the menu of your phone and looking for the device uh, information. Now, once you have that information here, you'll need to adjust the list size for however many people you're tracking. And then in this variable here, you'll go ahead and put the names of the people that you're tracking in the order that you put the MAC addresses here. Now, lastly, I've added some, uh, some uh, color uh, functions that I created in order to pulse the LEDs, but I'm not able to use the last solution I had, which was to raise the LED to a high voltage, create a delay and then bring it back down because the watch timer actually freaks out and crashes everything by killing the process. So instead, we create a detection ratio that basically allows us to fine tune how many packets uh, we need to detect that are not the packets we're looking for before we turn the LED off. Otherwise, it just turns on for a very small amount of time and isn't super useful. So within this code, we can see the actual functional part is right here. So what we're saying is if uh, the packet that we receive matches one of the MAC addresses in our list, then we are going to say that that person is here, and this is the string formatting that Ricardo used, and I went ahead and added a cooldown of 1000, meaning we have uh, 1000 packets detected that are not from the packet we're looking, uh, from the device we're looking for uh, before we go ahead and run this last function, which is to turn off um, all the LEDs. So if we detect one, uh, depending on whether it's the first or second person in the list, it'll either turn on a blue or red LED. And then if this cooldown timer gets all the way to zero, AKA if we get through and we get to this last part, then it will check to see if the cooldown timer is at zero. And if not, it just subtracts one. Now, obviously it'll just keep going a thousand times until it gets to zero. And when we get there, it'll turn off the LED. And in real life, because there's so many packets flying around, it takes about 12 seconds for the light to turn off. So now that we have this explained and I've explained how you can modify it, you'll need to add the libraries in order for all of this to work. And you can see them included here. Now the way that you include these is to click on sketch and then include library. And you'll be able to uh, also go and click add file at the bottom if you don't see it appear in that window. Now here you can just scroll through and see that I have a whole bunch of libraries, but if you navigate to the folder where you previously downloaded both the library and the INO file, you should find the libraries there and be able to simply include file with both of them and find them appearing right next to the sketch that you're working on. Now that means that they'll be included when you upload your sketch to the Node MCU. So once these are all together and you've modified your variables to make sure that the list size matches the number of MAC addresses you have included and the names are in order, so you have the, the name of the person along with the order of the MAC address, then you should be ready to go. The last step will be actually to push this to the Node MCU, which you can do by first clicking the check to verify the sketch and make sure that there are no mistakes. Now this is the step where, as you can see, we have a mistake and we'll need to fix something before we go ahead and push it. Now in this case, there's actually a character that's wrong that can't be converted into a MAC address, so we'll fix it here before checking again and making sure that everything in our sketch is okay. There, now we can see that everything checks out, so the last step will be to plug in the Node's MCU into the USB port and go ahead and click the Upload button to start the upload. This usually takes a little bit of time, but once it does, your Node MCU will be ready to wire and you'll be able to detect when your cell phone is putting out identifying signals. Once this process completes, we can go ahead and disconnect it and start taking a look at wiring up the LED. Now in our code, we've selected pins D5, D6, and D7 to control our three color, four pin RGB LED that we'll be using for this project. Now that's really convenient because on the node MCU, these are all lined up right next to the ground. 
and these uh, our RGB LEDs will require a ground pin right next to the other three pins we're using to control it. So we can just plug this into a mini breadboard and wire it up without needing to get involved in the bigger breadboard. And in this case, I'm not going to, going to use a resistor. Now, if you wanna be proper about it, you should definitely use a resistor, but in this case, because I know that the RGB LED can handle it and also uh, this Node MCU is not putting enough power to fry it, I'm just going to go ahead and use this. Now I have another design of this where I just used some salvage LEDs from a pool noodle toy. Uh, and if you want to do that, you can also use something like a potentiometer to turn the power up and down and make sure you don't fry your precious LEDs with this project. Now let's go ahead and test this now that it is wired up. We can go ahead and take a smartphone where we have put the MAC address in the Node MCU and we can go to the Wi-Fi settings menu in order to give this a test. Now you will generally see no matter what kind of phone you have a flood of packets as soon as you turn on the Wi-Fi when it starts searching for nearby networks. So let's see if it works by turning it on now. And as you can see, we are detecting packets. And an interesting thing about this is we can also see that it's, uh, as it connected, is able to, to detect data packets as well as just probe frames. Now, it's going to need to detect 1,000 different frames that are not from uh, this device in order to turn off, as it just did. But if you want to adjust this detection ratio so it turns on for longer or less long, let's say that maybe you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of Wi-Fi traffic, you can go back into the code and adjust this variable to change the amount of time that it takes to turn on or off the LED. And I'll show you how to do that now. Now here, you'll see the variable cooldown, which is initially set to zero. And every time we detect a packet that is from a device that we're tracking, it sets it to 1,000. Now you can go ahead and change this to a different variable that's either less or more, depending on the ambient traffic in your area, because this setup will cause it to require 1,000 packets that are not from the device that we're looking for in order to turn off the LED with this function here. Now again, you can just maybe make it 10 if you just want a quick light up and turn off every time you receive a packet, or 10,000 if you want it to stay on for maybe five minutes. Uh, but either way, this will allow you to ratchet that up or down depending on if you have a lot of ambient traffic or a little bit, or if you just want to keep it on for longer or less long. Privacy is becoming harder and harder to come by, with everyone from private companies to the government interested in tracking your every move. Now when completing this project, you might notice that the LED is turning on even when you're not interacting with your phone, meaning it's putting out trackable signals pretty much all the time. Now even more worryingly, you might turn off your Wi-Fi and still see this happening, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to explain why this might occur. Now there's a feature in many smartphones called AGPS, or Assisted GPS, which uses the position of nearby wireless networks when the GPS signal isn't available, for example if you're in a city where the signal might bounce off a bunch of buildings. Now, it sends out signals and determines the nearest Wi-Fi networks and finds your location via that. So it avoids needing to use GPS at all, but actually goes around even setting up airplane mode sometimes, which can be a pretty big concern if you don't want to be tracked this way. Now, to disable it, you can go into your GPS settings and disable a high accuracy GPS, and that should set things up okay for now. But in general, you'll want to turn on airplane mode when you don't use your Wi-Fi, and if you're really serious about changing your MAC address, rather than relying on the default device behavior, you're going to want to go in and actually root the device, which does come with its own privacy concerns itself. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on the show, be sure to reach out on Twitter, because I would love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.